Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. Blah. I am your scary, spooky host, Norman Sanzo. Blah. Joining me today is the scary one himself, Silver Quill. Snar. Snar. Blah. And also joining us is the ghost Pokemon trainer herself, Selfire Gengar Hot Songs. Blah. Cookies. Let me lick your cookies. And joining us as guest host for today's podcast is Finn the Pony. I've seen the end of the world. How was it? It was pretty good. Ah. <clears throat> wow, I can do not do that voice. So, in today's episode, we are going to review Season 6, Episode 15, 28 Pranks Later. Written by FMD Marco well, the synopsis goes. In this episode, Rainbow Dash pranks get out of hand. So the others pony decide to give her a taste of her own medicine. <laughs> Honestly, Norma, when you, uh, with your blas, I thought we were going to review an episode of Greg the Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> you said it just like the, you just said it just like the count from that, uh, TV show. What do you mean, blah? I just I just ended every sentence with blah, blah. <laughs> I don't go blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Man, can you protect me since these two are mean to me? <laughs> okay, Shappy. Yay! Uh, but anywho, let's start off with first impressions. And oh, since we have three people here, how do we even go? So there's Silver Quill F. Um, so I'm going to start with F. So Finn, what do you think? What do I think of 20 pranks later? I actually liked it a lot. Oh, really? Not. I mean, it's, you could kind of, you can kind of see where it was going because I've seen this plot done before. If any of you have seen, uh, the Foster Stone for Imaginary Friends episode Nightmare on Wilson Way where the whole thing was just a big elaborate zombie prank that everybody was in on. I saw the premise before, but I like the execution. I mean, the way they managed to justify bringing some kind of zombie type element into MLP, it was awesome. I mean, if you take the cookies and you just replace it with, like, body parts and brains, it could be, like, a legitimate zombie story. Very, very simple premise, but very fun execution, so I liked it a lot. Uh, all right, all right. And next up is Sapphire. When I saw this episode, it was meh, but I do believe this is mysterious what Mayor Duel done right. And that makes me happy, because... You know, Mysterious Mary Do Well, apparently not that many people liked it because of the main six and how they handled it because they didn't talk to Rainbow Dash first. Well, this time they did talk to with Rainbow Dash at first. It didn't work out. And, well, she kind of had it coming. And you know it goes too far when she starts pranking the innocent bystander. And Fluttershy! You don't prank Fluttershy! No. Just no. Even I know that, and I'm not the biggest fan. <laughs> and those are my overall impressions. All right. And Silver. Well, in terms of impressions, first Rainbow was all like, ha, the others were like, meh. And then Rainbow was like, eek. And the was like, ooh. But then everyone's like, blah. And, and Rainbow was like, eek. <laughs> Translation, please. And then everyone else was like, ha, ha. <laughs> and Rainbow was like, don't. <laughs> and I'm like, eek. I enjoyed it, but I, I can't say it like broke boundaries. I agree with the idea this is what Mayor Duell should have been, could have been, had the had the cast just done some critical uh, work. However, the the reason that the talking to Rainbow did not work is because of Applejack. Now there's a bitter pill. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll get to that. I will say I'm always uncomfortable with when you're trying to denounce a, a an action, but then you resort to the very behavior you denounce. Are you really in the high ground? <laughs> really? Whoever said we were all on the moral high ground? Really? <laughs> well, these yes, really. The, well, these these ponies are on a better ground than us. They've got they've got four legs to stand up. We can't even get a leg up on morality. Unless you're brawny. Unless I'm brawny. Brawny Buck. Ah. Who's always standing on the moral high ground? He knows the moral of the story, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Last time I watched this video, he encouraged kids to start fights in schools. Thought that very bad idea. Very bad idea. I can understand how that would turn someone off. So, uh, but basically this episode was 
it was a lot of fun, and it is yes. the second most G-rated uh, approach to a horror trope I've ever seen. <laughs> All right. And as for me, hmm, I, I, how, how do I even put this in words? I'm just shocked that they inserted the word zombies in this show. It's like, okay. How are you shocked? They were doing that back in season one. Well, the... Uh, well, that was a mere mention. I think he's talking about, like, actual execution of putting them in there. Yeah, that's the whole oh. thing. Like, zombies could mean more than one thing. Like, a zombie sleeve for Christmas or whatever it is. Like, how Shining Armor was. But this one, they seem to know what a zombie is, so... Yeah, this is gonna be cool. And Rainbow Dash's jokes were creative for the most part until she started pranking the innocent bystanders. Yeah, that was pushing it. That was just not nice. But other than that, I would just say that this episode is just okay. Not the best, but it's okay. It's fun. So we're all just sort of, eh, it was okay. It was fine. It was fine. We just, it was, it was, it was, it was basic, but it was fun at the very least. Hmm, true that, true that. But anyway, let's get into the review. So if you have not watched this episode, pause here and watch it because we're going to go full spoilers. Welcome. Also, don't forget to grab your bucket of cookies before you start listening to this podcast. (laughs) And welcome back. So we start off with a walk through the ever-free forest. Nothing can go wrong at night, right? It's just Fluttershy and her animal friends walking in the dark, misty forest. Actually, nothing can go wrong in, in Everfree. It has completely lost its teeth. Oh, yeah, true. I know. Silver, hold me, though. Norman is scaring me. Well, that's, that's just Norman. Someone being... other than Norman, hold me. <laughs> I'll hold you, Sappy. Okay, Finn loves me. <laughs> hey. um, but <laughs> And thus the ship fix her born. Oh, no. Actually, this was a ship long sailed and sunk long before, but hmm. I wouldn't that. say sunk. I just say it's it's in port and it's, it's run its course. <laughs> yeah, still friends though. Uh, but still, what could go wrong in the Free Forest except for some kind of wild animal stalking Fluttershy? <laughs> Even Harry the Bear is afraid. What could go wrong? Eh, and well. We get some kind of roar from a hybrid timber wolf that can fly? I changed Conoquus. Ch- what? I changed Conoquus. It looks like a changeling and a Traconoquus had a love child. <laughs> change Conoquus. Alrighty then. Long or change Conoquus wolf. wolf. Change Conoquus wolf. They had a special uh, get together, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, but, but nah, you're, you're wrong. It's Rainbow Dash. Haha, <laughs> playing a mean prank on Fluttershy. Ah. Uh, Let's analyze the setup for this. Either Rainbow Dash followed them on their tea party, stayed with them out of sight, past sundown to to stalk them, and anticipated their route to set to get the costume together, or she just happened to be in a certain spot and cobbled that together willy nilly, complete with glowing eyes. That is dedication, no matter how you look at it. Or just plain dumb luck if she just happened upon them. While wearing that costume, I think that speaks more of Rainbow's private life. But honestly, I would just say that Rainbow Dash stalked them for a while now because knowing the dedication and gumption that Rainbow Dash would put into pulling a prank, yeah, she would do that. She would stalk them at the tea party in the middle of the forest and yeah, that's not... Just to get a laugh. Mm-hmm. And, well, after her second fear by Rainbow Dashing saying boo, we get, we get to the Rainbow Castle. Them doing a lot of, well, what's the word I'm looking for? A meeting and telling Rainbow Dash off. Like, that's not right. That's bad of you. You shouldn't scare Fluttershy. Not even, <laughs> everyone's just pissed off. Except for Pinky. She was kind of happy about it. <laughs> I agree with Silver that the talk couldn't have gone as well as it had, but this is the main reason that it's better than Meriduel. They address Rainbow's issue immediately. Mm -hmm. They don't try to play any kind of, they don't try to pull any strings. They don't try to like, you know, they don't do the stupid Meriduel costume thing where it's like, okay, we're going to teach her a lesson and then tell her what you did wrong. It's just straight up, here's what you did wrong. You better fix your act right now. Yeah, because if you 
pull a prank on poor old Fluttershy. Like, if it was any pony else, then we'll, we'll talk about it. Being, a little lean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but with Fluttershy, like, come on. Even Pinkie Pie knows not to prank Fluttershy. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it, it's in the, it's in the MOP 10 commandments. Thou shalt not prank Fluttershy. Yeah. And the sit down and talk does seem to work for a bit. But uh, Rainbow Dash is on her pranking spree by putting a whoopee cushion on Twilight's throne. And this is where Applejack kind of sabotages the whole thing, which is hard to say as an Applejack fan. Yeah, I love AJ. She's my favorite. <laughs> but honestly, Applejack here is just saying her mind because think about it. Like, a whoopee cushion is the most laziest joke in the joke book besides puns. And that's just... Yeah. Oh, Ben, are you prepared to see, receive punishment for that statement? <laughs> oh, my. But, nah. With Applejack you saying... Know, hmm? You know you can't fight the pundits. Oh, I'm willing to take it. We've got an abundance of jokes here. Oh, yes. Let's see how fast you can get them out. <laughs> because I know puns are not easy. Uh, Whippications, they are easy. Puns, they're not. They may not be uh, easy, but they're ponderful. Yeah, but even if the pace is a little ponderous, <laughs> mm. we know we know the joking fundamentals. <laughs> uh, but we if... he likes to pontificate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> Maybe give give us a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but anyway, Applejack says we're just punning around. <laughs> <laughs> it's so punny, it hurts. Oh yeah, but anyway. With how Applejack says that repercussions are the laziest joke of all, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash kind of like goes what and accept this as a challenge for Rainbow Dash and goes off to prank the whole town. I want to back up just one sec though. When Applejack says that this is Rainbow Dash you're talking to, a, he- a heavily competitive pony, if you throw the gauntlet, you are inviting disaster. That is, that is a given. Yeah. So this actually this episode and what we'll get to later, uh Buckball season, AJ's taken a hit in terms of being the most get along in his pony you'll ever see. She really needs to step up her game again. But on a more sensible one as well. Yeah. But honestly, when you think about it, she's just stating out the truth. And the truth is whoopee cushions uh, are lazy. Wait, wait. They also say whoopee cushions are funny. And is that not also the truth? Yes. Time in a place. I, I have made people laugh at a fart joke. <laughs> Can't be done. Yeah, but a time in a place. Because right now, in this current situation that they're in, everybody's having a stern, serious talk. Talking to Rainbow Dash about her actions. And doing that in that place, in that situation, yeah, nah... Actually, one could argue, yeah. I heard. would personally think that hearing a straight up <laughs> out of nowhere in a serious situation would be pretty funny. Yes, humor is based on pain, and one of the, and there's very few things that are as painful as offended dignity and seriousness. Well, in the situation where everyone's laughing, yes, but in this situation, no one was except for Pinkie Pie. And if the f- joke falls flat, it's not funny. Mm. But that, or you're dealing with a comedy dead audience. No sense of humor. Comedy is in the eye of the beholder. It's hard to make anyone laugh. But as we carry on, we go to the first prank victim, Rarity. Oh, Rarity. And Sweetie Belle, though she tends to come out on top. Yeah, but she gets free food. (laughs) I don't think that Sweetie Belle is in on the whole situation until Rarity explains the situation. And yeah, this is an elaborate setup. Like, (laughs) Rainbow Dash here has a lot of dedication to her art. To mm. her art, to her craft. Do you think she made that cake to the herself? art of the dress. To oh. the art of ruining the dress. Yep. <laughs> art of the mess. Oh, there you go. Art of the mess. I like that. <laughs> yep. But Can we get a song like that? Rainbow singing. And that's <laughs> the art of the, of the mess. mess. <laughs> uh, but still, um, this deliberate prank starts out with a cake in the middle of the boutique where Sweetie Belle's dress is put on top of the cake. Well, not really dress, but her uniform. Yes. In fact, Sefi, have you ever been part of Girl Scouts? 
No, I've never been part of Girl Scouts. I wouldn't know. <laughs> but I've been part of Boy Scouts, and I was so happy to see scouting in MLB. Yay. Because I'm an Eagle Scout. I was in I was in Cub Scouts, and that's why that Pinewood Derby drove my inner child to a rage. <laughs> uh, we never got anything that cool. <laughs> yeah, but, no. Sadly, I didn't get to make profit off of selling cookies to door by door strangers. <laughs> <laughs> door by door. I didn't get to use my cute little charm in order to make people buy cookies for me or something. And you have so much of it. I knew I'd gotten old when uh, I went to go buy some Girl Scout cookies, and I said, oh, I, I only have a card. I can go to the bank right across the street and get some cash. Said, oh, no, it's fine. We have an app for that. <laughs> <laughs> the Girl Scouts have, have an, an app, app for that. For that. <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I have a friend who owns a magic shop, and he charges credit card using his iPhone or whatever device he has connected to some kind of device. Well, I know at BronyCon I saw Silver uh, charging a guy through PayPal with a uh, weird iPad card swipe system thing. It was not PayPal, it was an actual credit card. Yeah. It's Either card. way, I saw somebody swiping it. Also, my school actually has the same thing when I, uh, I commute to my school and uh, every... For first Friday of every month, we get free food, and they have this app on the iPad. All you do is just swipe your ID card, and you get admittance, and you get free bagels. Yay! Yay! Are they actually free, though? <laughs> yes, they are. All you have to do is just swipe the ID card. Oh, it's kind of like how I get discounts at Arby's. Just don't let your friend upgrade to the iPhone 7. Oh, no. Why? They removed the phone jack. Uh, uh the, uh, the headphone jack. The headphone jack. That's where the like card it's... reader plugs in. Oh, no. Oh. So, anyway, <laughs> we see that Rarity says that, you know what? Rainbow Dash can trick me because I know her tricks. So, I'm going to sew a new uniform for you, Sweetie Belle. And starts to sew. And the sewing machine is a cake. What? So, as pranks go, you're saying that's just so, so? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh. Well, the cake is above average. Yep. <laughs> the cake is a lie, except not. Yep. <laughs> yeah. The cake was the actually cake the truth is a in cake this case. While the sewing cake is a lie. You could say this prank was a piece of cake. <laughs> Hi-oh. Oh yes. Uh, well, at least that was interesting setup. Right there, it shows Rainbow's dedication. I mean, this whole sequence that we're getting into is what Griffin the Brush Off would have been if not for Pinky's moderating influence. I don't agree. When people say that Rainbow is behaving out of character. I, I do agree with you on that one because just look at the pranks that happen during Griffin the Brush Off because we get a situation where they put invisible ink at Twilight's table. We get to see them painting the apples in multiple stripes or colors. We get to see them scare the bejesus out of Spike. And also, who else did we saw? Rarity, Rarity, Sneezing Powder. So, yeah, this was kind of in her repertoire of pranks. It's just only that she's never done it before this. Well, the, there's one important difference, and that's because, I think, of Pinkie Pie's influence. The pranks in, in Griffin the Brush Off were short burst surprise. Like, just that one minute, whoo, and then it's done. Yeah. Well, the worst is that Applejack would have to wash off her crops, which technically you should do anyway. Mm-hmm. You gotta wash apples before you eat them. Exactly. But this one, kind of summarizing real quick, you have to, Rarity now has to clean up an entire room of smeared cake. Mm-hmm. Applejack has to get her bed back indoors. Mr. Cake could have broken his jaw or at least broken some teeth. Yep. Yeah. And don't forget Cranky Doodle Donkey. That smell's not gonna, yeah. He's gonna wash that out, yeah. He's gonna have a lot of tomato sauce in his future. And also, Big Bang could have died. And Princess Celestia is still being buried on Earth at the time of this podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. She probably, Princess Celestia probably got a massive paper cut from Spike's prank. She, uh, had to subsume on scrolls to survive. <laughs> uh, on the plus side, it's a very high in fiber diet. Oh, true that. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, Shirley. Just public embarrassment, no big deal. Yep. Yeah, that one, that one might have been the tamest. Although Rainbow should look into a career as a musician. Uh-huh. Magician. Uh, she just 
Oh, look, I'm spinning and there's nothing. I'm spinning again and there's a drawing. I spin again and there's a rainbow dash. Uh, nothing on my board, nothing on this side, but when I flip it over, whoa! And then, and then Trixie's off on the side going, I could have done that! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The great and powerful Trixie is jealous. <laughs> but anywho, after the event of pranks, everybody goes to see Pinky, telling her, Pinky, tell Rainbow Dash to stop. It's time to stop. Oh, but we didn't cover Rainbow's uh, prank on Pinky, which I maintain is probably just Z- uh, Gummy Zen Garden in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still, the prank um, that Pinky got was pretty funny. And if you take a look-see, you can see the gala dress. Oh, yeah. So that's much cool. The prank that she pulled on Pinky was just inside the closet going, boo. And oh god, was she scared. She got me good. So she says it in a really eerie way. It's like, <laughs> she got me good. Whoa, Pinky. <laughs> I think you enjoyed that a little too much. <laughs> yeah. But they tell her to control her because you're the only one that can. Uh, and say, so Pinky goes to Rainbow Dash's house. Does this remind you of Griffin the brush off a bit? Hey, we might. Yeah, I mean, with the whole Pinkie Pie going to Rainbow Dash's house, I almost expect Griffin to pop out of there. Although, this time she's going for the reverse, whereas last time she was going to uh encourage pranking now, she's just going to stop it. The plan here is to... Well, long story short, Rainbow Dash spent all her lifetime supply of money to buy prank cookies to prank on the what was it girl scout cookies what do they call themselves i forgot philly scouts joke, yeah. joke cookies yes philly scouts yeah the philly scouts changing their cookies and making anyone that eats them have rainbow well not everyone got rainbow muzzles yeah yeah it's all rainbow they were filler. custom made <laughs> all rainbow all the time yeah yes <laughs> rainbows not even once after Pinky talks, and even Pinky notes, that's really not that funny. Normally, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to say, oh, Pinky is the element of laughter, therefore she should always be smiling or giggling, or Rainbow is always the element of loyalty, Erico. I don't, I don't like defining characters by that power. However, in, there is a case where if the element of laughter and the best, uh, party pony in the entire dang town says, that's really not funny, you should probably pay attention. Perk up your ears there, sport. But, and Rainbow has basically committed her life savings. So she's seen this through come hell or high water. <laughs> so the next day, they, the full Philly Scouts are getting ready to distribute young cookies. It is the time for the consuming cookie Oh, joy. Time. How nice. So the next day, Rainbow goes to visit Pinky and just sort of see what's what. And Pinky's not feeling so good. She's lying sick in bed. Which, I'd like to add that three sights in this show that I can instantly think of that break your heart. Scootaloo throwing away her scooter. Mm-hmm. Pinkie Pie drinking her own tears to hide them. Where? Oh, th- this was in... Uh, Pinky Pride, uh, right? P- Pinky Pinkie Pride. Pride. Oh, okay. She's crying, but she doesn't want her friends to see, so she just laps them off her face. Oh. She, like, licks them off. It's like she doesn't want anybody to see him. That that was heartbreaking. And now Pinkie Pie's sick in bed. I'm I'm seriously mm. bumming out here. I'm seriously you're bringing me down, man. Yeah. Bring me down. You just want to go for a hug. You don't want to hug her. She's sick. In a hazmat suit. Really. <laughs> uh, but it seems that Pinkie is down with the sickness. Oh really? <laughs> Gonna get down with the sickness. Come on, Pinkie. Come on, Pinky, get down with the sickness. <laughs> yeah, and this sickness is a malfunction in the cookies. Or at least that's what we, as the audience, conclude because she just starts begging for them. Yeah. It turns every pony into cookie monster. They just need the cookies. Well, I don't think so. Not yet, at least. But anyway, after debating if this is a good idea, you know what? Screw it. It's a good idea. We go off to the Philly Scout Cookie Giveaway Drive, whatever it is called. We get to see Applejack, Rarity, and Rainbow Jack herself. Helping distribute cookies and helping the tree fillies or the CMCs distribute them. Going from home to home, knocking on doors, being scared by big giant bears who wants to murder anyone. And yeah, Harry here says, I got my eyes on you. And you don't want to take off a bear, the ultimate bodyguard. Yep. (laughs) So we go from door to door, from the princess's castle to the donkey's home away from all of this. 
to which I find this rather interesting, the cakes. They have their own confection and they're selling them cookies to them. Like, well, am I not the only one weirded out by this? No, no, it makes sense to me. Ah, well, okay. So uh, we see everyone in town is just buying from them. Like, I think they almost sold out. So that's cool. Making that cash money. Mm-hmm. Cash, cash money. Because them Girl Scouts have them puppy dog eyes. So you have to buy them cookies, yo. Can you buy a box from us? <laughs> uh, sure. Two boxes? Uh, absolutely. Twelve boxes? <laughs> well, yeah. that's because all scouts are trained in the use of the voice from the Dune series. <laughs> you want to buy cookies? Uh, but... <laughs> buy that cookie now. <laughs> uh, so, after the selling of cookies, they still have stock and I think they're gonna have them for themselves. And... Rainbow Dash is, see, well, Rainbow Dash here is just a bit, huh, what is she doing rubbing her hoofs together? It seems like she has a desperately plan, and she thinks something is up, so she goes from home to home seeing, well, they should be screaming people because they ate cookies, so their muzzles should be all rainbowing like, but nah, it's too quiet, too too quiet, not even a bird chirp or a cricket, too too quiet, you could say that it's really really bad. But they do such a great atmosphere in this part. They just, I uh, know. it's, it, it, it does have the classic horror trope feel. It's like, yeah. oh snap, don't go in the room, Rainbow! You're gonna die! You're gonna <laughs> die! <laughs> yeah, and the first home she does go into is the cakes. Uh, she sees Mrs. Cake there eating cookies and she, like, weirded out, like, uh, Mrs. Cake, are you okay? She turns around, her face is covered in rainbows, and she screams, Red Cookies! Cookies! And yeah, that's Total Rainbow. Pinkie Pie comes and <laughs> scares the bejesus out of her, and the twins! Uh, oh, they're, they're the most adorable little monsters ever! <laughs> this yep. is the most adorable beating ever! That's right! Stuff it, Flurry Heart, these two are still cuter! Yep. <laughs> and Gotta up your game. Yep, yep. And she GTFO. And apparently the whole town is infected with some kind of cookie zombie sickness. She goes to Cookie Zombie Virus. Yep. Then we're going to get Independence Day. I don't know. <laughs> no, man. No, this is Resident Ponyville. Survival yeah. horror at its most adorable. Yep, yep. <laughs> Uh, Twilight gets the sickness. Harry and Fluttershy get the sickness. Even the evil Angel Bunny. Wow. Yeah, Angel you know, wasn't evil before? Yeah, you don't need to say evil Angel Bunny. That's just redundant. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm just stating it out there because people might think Angel Bunny's nice. No, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> nope. So nope. you mean corpulent brownie. <laughs> he made a very eleg- elegant argument for Angel. Yeah. yeah. You can argue all you want. You can argue all you want. We know the truth. We know the truth. And he can yeah. handle the truth. <laughs> and, uh, and Rainbow Dash goes to the Sweet Apple Acres, to the farmhouse, and yeah, Granny Smith and Big Mac are infected. <laughs> uh, much, much bad. But actually, if you, if you see the shots of the crowd following them, it's actually a small percentage of Ponyville. Oh yeah. It's not a yeah. huge one, but still, it's scary. And Rarity goes back home saying, yes, this was a success. Now, let's celebrate with Cookie. And Rainbow Dash just says, put that cookie down. Put that cookie down or so help me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Put that cookie back where it came from or so help me, so help me. <laughs> I, I got to give props to Cranky. He is really selling it. <laughs> <laughs> what you think he's not going to sell? <laughs> uh, so, right. Well, he's he, he's doing a good job. It's like, and he apparently deodorized fast. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He definitely had the smell of a zombie if he couldn't wash it up fast enough. Yep, true. Yeah. That. <laughs> uh, Rainbow Dash explains the situation to Rarity and Applejack about how she pranked the cookies, making them being rainbow after you eat them and whatnot and it seems to have a side effect where it changes everybody to be cookie addict monsters and yeah they they need to run if not like they're they're gonna be eaten so the best place to run is to the barnyard at sweet apple acres yay 
Well, in all honesty, I can empathize with the cookie zombies. You get between me and a box of Samoas, we're going to have problems. Yeah. That's They're, me with Thin Mints and more the ones with the uh, peanut butter chocolate cookies. I forget what they're called. That's right. <laughs> that, that, that there will be blood. Yeah. Blood will spill. Yeah. I'd actually like to see my mom versus Silver Clone when it comes to a box of Samoa cookies. That is a unique fantasy. <laughs> I, I don't believe I've ever heard someone say, I'd like to see my family member dressed like a bozo on the internet. <laughs> no. To devour cookies. <laughs> Hey. No, I just like see who can beat the living crap out of who. Oh, wow. As I sit back with popcorn in my mouth. Cookie <laughs> wars! Wait, is, and you want them dressed up like me? That's an instant handicap. That's like universal bullseye. Yep. <laughs> but uh, we see that they're preparing for the zombie apocalypse by nailing doors shut, uh, putting boards on the windows, and all that horror movie trope. And all those ponies once. It's cookies. And suddenly the barn goes dark. This reminds me of the Resident Evil 4 scene where you and Sarah have to protect Ashley. Yeah, that barn horse. I, I'd rather just let them take Ashley or end this escort mission. <laughs> yeah. It's no a, one likes it's... escort missions. But anywho, oh, it seems that Rarity and Applejack ate cookies. So did the CMC. And now... Everybody is going after the cookie that Rainbow Dash is slaying on. And, oh god, it's so scary. Oh god, she's gonna die. She's gonna, nope, it's a joke. Ha ha. It's just a prank, bro. Just a prank, bro. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, long story short, Pinky read it on Rainbow and told everyone her plan. And the plan is the whole town counterattack with their own joke, which was really messed up. And, Rainbow Dash knew how it feels to be on the receiving end of a very bad joke and now she's trying uh, and now she's going to try harder. <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened to uh losing a friend's trust is the fastest way to lose a friend? Good mm-hmm. question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This doesn't apply. Mm-hmm. You're like You're an ass thinking it. The treachery <laughs> the treachery that is Pinkie Pie. <laughs> yeah, but still it's a it's a lesson that Rainbow needs to learn. I think the term is called having a taste of your own medicine, was it? Yes, mm. having a taste of your own medicine, Norman. Good, you're learning American slang. Even though that's a really stupid uh saying on its own, because why would you why would you pay someone back by giving them a curative curative medicinal substances <laughs> and the worst part if it's your if it's your own medicine then it's got to be prescription so they could die <laughs> yeah. uh, so i this could help save my life and i'm trying to kill you i'm a yeah. good righteous person so i think that's the expression there <laughs> yes it's the, it's the expression but the expression is then you're a you're an aspiring doctor explain this <laughs> it's it's a it's a stupid saying because it, that that's like saying oh oh you just oh you just pissed me off here I'm gonna give you a lovely cupcake I just made for you <laughs> oh. here here have some fish oil it'll yeah. make you feel better but it'll also make you feel disgusted actually I could totally hear Pinkie Pie saying that you may be really angry have a cupcake <laughs> but regarding th- this year episode. I always found it weird that the uh, the summary, the the pitch that was released weeks in advance mm-hmm. of the debut, flat out said that when Rainbow's pranking goes too far, the town ponies decide to turn it around on her, pull a prank back. Yeah, spoilers. Yeah, that so that was the, the whole plot right there. Yeah, that was pretty much what happened. We just we watched this like, wait a minute, we already know. Okay, you know that this is going to end in a gotcha. Yeah. I mean, we're we're old enough to recognize because we're older than the target audience, and we've of seen we are. we've seen this style before, except for Safi. But uh, <laughs> I have. Have you? Yes, yes, I have. But are you older than the target audience, young whippersnapper? <laughs> well, considering I'm 19, I'd assume so. Uh, young whippersnappers. Uh, 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 you youngins, you don't understand art like we do. <laughs> uh, I was like 21. I don't want to hear it. I was two years older than you, mister, so don't you go rattling your mouth at me. <laughs> uh, but anywho, for me, I didn't read the synopsis, so I was in the dark for the whole 
part. So it was kind of a surprise on me. But I kind of wonder. Even then, you could probably predict it was coming either way, considering it's a prank episode. It's more that I wonder why they chose to write the spoiler. Uh, why the, did someone just get kind of ho hum about it? Yeah. Or did they say we have to make this clear so parents won't send us angry letters? <laughs> considering the internet is the internet, that probably the latter. Back when a Pokemon tournament came out, somebody's uh, parent got really mad because they thought Blaziken's crotch scruff was a penis. <laughs> so the internet parents get offended over everything. Heck, my parents <laughs> still think that Courage the Cowardly Dog is the worst show ever because of how scary and gruesome it was. Yeah, that show that broke boundaries. How so? I I remember and loved it. Yeah, love- yeah, my mom still forbids me from seeing that because she saw blood in one episode, I guess. So? <laughs> and was like, nope, you're not watching that. I saw G.I. Joe the movie. I saw a dude take a snake to the heart. An mm-hmm. actual snake to the heart. Well, the uh, 80s were different snake. from the 2000s. Don't even get me started on Optimus Prime. Oh, God. The death that wept that Either a generation way, parent, wept the before. point is parents are overprotective of their kids. Well, she does have a point there, but yeah, whatever the reason is for the synopsis, it's rather silly and rather spoilish. But uh, that's the review, uh, and I think we should jump into final thoughts. And Finn, what do you think, man? Uh, like I said before, I do like this episode. I like the execution. I like the atmosphere, definitely. Even it's it's about as close to a G-rated zombie production as you can make. Um, I like how it's a better version of a pre-existing episode. You know, they could have easily just done what they did last time, and it could just been Mary Duell all over again, just with zombies. And uh, I thought it was uh, pretty good for what it was. All right, and Seppi. I am glad that this episode happened because, you know, Mysterious Merida well. Although I do wonder how many episodes they plan on rehashing in order to better the concept, if you know what I mean. And Silver, what about you, man? Well, I was I was initially worried as they were scouting it out, but I think they were ba- baking up just the right story. The reception was a little frosty, but uh, by and large, I think everyone chipped in. And uh, produced a pretty wholesome story that I, I would, I'd want Samoa. Uh, all right. My only thing is, there's always that question of, if you resort to the very thing you denounce, can you really say it was a bad thing? I mean, he, here's the funny thing with Rainbow. She, she is not a pony who learns from lectures. In some ways, her friends are right to pull the mayor do wells and the zombie cookies because she learns by mistake. And the only way to really make that mistake apparent without someone getting hurt is to take the reins. But there are ways you could have accomplished this without making the town sink to her level. Case in point, I looked to Lightning Dust, who was the best foil to Rainbow because she she was all of Rainbow's competitiveness dialed up. So if Rainbow were to be paired off with a pony who's even more an aggressive prankster, maybe even worse... Then suddenly Rainbow can see the negativity for herself rather than having a, a artificial lesson set up. But would you think that would be a competition to Rainbow, proving on who's the best prankster? Because I could see that happening. It would be a competition at first, but unlike her counterpart, Rainbow would then get to see the impact. That's the thing that was she wasn't acknowledging with Fluttershy or sticking around to see with the others. She didn't recognize the impact of what was happening. If she's given the chance to witness that, then that usually shocks her onto the better path. She's a good pony at heart. You just got to get her aware of her surroundings. Hmm, all right. And as for me, well, this episode was an okay episode. It was fun. They had a lot of things going for it, like the whole zombie thing. That was really, really fun. But besides that, it's a really mediocre episode. It was in the middle of the road. Zombie said that was kind of fun. The joke was entertaining. But I've seen this episode before. It's done well here, but it's something I've seen before. And I just say it's an okay episode. Nothing to rave about. But I do have to say that 
they should have shown this around October. It'll be a really fun setup with Halloween coming up and whatnot. We can still we can still rave about it. I'll just flip the lights on and off. <laughs> the system only kids the from cheat the night is ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had that light switch installed for you so that you could turn the lights on and off. Not so you could throw light switch rights. <laughs> Norman, save me. They're being crazy. Nope. Uh, but anyway, that was the review for this week's episode. And, well, so what's next week's thing going to be? Well, next we're going to do something special. Oh, how oh, special is that? Special. It's time Ooh. to get the mosquito repellent and get on your hiking shorts, because we are going to Camp Everfree. No! They're going to become part of the legend of Everfree. I don't want to go back to camp. Well, tough tortillas, but you get superpowers in the mix. Wait, I get superpowers? Okay, I'm cool with this. So, join us next week as we discuss Equestria Girls number Quattro, The Legend of Everfree. Ooh, I'm excited for this. <laughs> Oh, which yay. May, which may actually be scarier than brainless ponies looking for cookies. I mean, oh, true most, of, that. Those, most uh, of those high school probably. students are pretty brainless. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's next week's review. And, well, <laughs> we had a lot of fun on this one. So, anywho, I have been Norman Sanzo. Blah. I'm Silver Quill. I'm Sapphire, hard song, insert movie, horror shriek here. And I am Finn the Pony. Thank you for watching. Blah. We'll catch you guys next week. See ya. Blah. Adios. Blah. Bye. Save me. Blah. That was scary. Blah. I do not say blah, blah, blah. Is how you people are acting. I don't go blah, blah, blah.